So Troy has won a major this year. He's leading player of the year. He's leading average, and he's in another title match. That's that's what Dan Knowlton's got to face here this afternoon. And, oh, by the way, Troy strikes a lot. <laughs> if you could throw a ball like Troy, you would strike a lot too. I mean, he does things with a bowling ball that most of us don't even dream about doing because it's impossible. The thing that, that amazes us watching over these last – four or five weeks since we've been out here now is the pin action that Troy creates. Isn't it? It's not like he throws a super hard or super high rev rate, but when that ball touches the head pin, it just goes flying. Well, his rev rate is pretty high. I mean, no, it, it is, but I mean, we, we've seen guys on the younger tour that have more speed and rev rate that don't get the pin action that Troy does. That's got to be all about axis rotation and angle entry to throw the pins around. Kind of hard to believe that didn't fall down when you threw a bunch, <laughs> oh, a bunch of pins over towards it. Dave Small with some extra commentary back there, feeling bad for Troy. Um, we also have Mike Flanagan with us here. Yeah, guys, um, and Tom can speak to this probably better than I can. But I went down and talked to the players and the reps, which Tom is one of the reps for uh, for Brunswick Corporation, which both players are represented here tonight with the brand of hammer. Uh, both players are using the purple hammer, and Troy Lent has. Uh, two purples, and they are both pin up. Uh, they, one is longer with more down lane. The other one is earlier and a little more round. And uh, they they are newer purple hammers. And, of course, Dan has one purple hammer he'll be using tonight on the show. It is pinned down, and uh, it is the uh, 72 hardness rule ball, which is allowed out here on this tour. It's about two years old, that bowling ball right there. And he also wanted everybody to know at home, that he won an eight-pin no-tap tournament here recently, and he just wanted everybody at home to know that he, he won an eight-pin no-tap tournament where he also got the third, sixth, and ninth frames with free strikes. That was that's good. You a nice trophy for that? Actually, uh, 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 Troy's got the, the ball he won the, the U.S. Open with is sitting down there, and that's a pin negative. And he he kind of likes that one because it tumbles more forward. And when he gets to use it, he can trap up the pocket. So... They're all three down there. They're all surfaced. They're all ready to go. Look at this shot. He got out about the one and a half board there. And this is, again, best of three. A little different format here in the World Series as Ballard Championship. Best of three. So win two, and you win the title. And Dan coming off, he hasn't stopped bowling. Troy had a little bit of a break there because he won his previous match in two. So he, he's had a little bit of a rest. Well, I mean, Dan's got to got to feel kind of fortunate. Look, he's only got a boy tro bowl Troy Lynn. He already beat Walter Ray Williams Jr. and John Janowitz. The last two matches have been Hall of Famers, uh, but Troy is having a fantastic year. So, well, the way Dan's throwing the ball right now, and, and if he can keep it out there and kind of bounce it off one, one, two, some of them kind of look like they're going in the gutter. I think he's got a real good chance of winning this match. Yeah, that was more like three down lane. Yeah, that was that was a little bit inside of a shot on lane 54. There's there seems to be, and you guys have probably talked about it, uh, a strip of oil. <laughs> you know, a couple three board some wide going down the lane, and if you hit that, and I think it happened to Walter in the previous matches that today, the ball just doesn't hook at all. But if you get on the left side of that little strip, it goes across the lane. Troy looks like he's got his ball speed up there pretty good here. He typically does, but those first couple look pretty firm. Take a look as the uh, four pins going to uh, just kind of wrap around the seven here. Well, if the speeds are right, it says he just threw that 15-8. But, boy, when it ball's going down there, it looks a lot faster than that. I'd like to know how many seven that one was a little faster. Up. Yeah, that one was a little faster. <laughs> I think flame yeah, down for twenty-four. I mean, yeah. Guys, Troy Lent getting here to the show. He beat Skip Pavone in the round of sixteen, and then Mr. Gould in the round of eight, and then of course he defeated Tom Hess in the round of four. Tommy had a kind of unique road getting here, crumbling that bucket in the tenth frame in that one match. <laughs> Yeah, it was against Chris Barnes. It was number one versus number 16. Hess barely snuck into this one. I was standing next to Jack Jurek, and when that bucket crumbled, he goes, he gave me the jitters because he remembers that when it happened to him and Walter Ray crumbled the bucket. And 
We call those flashbacks, and that happens to everybody out here. Oh, Whoa. all right. So now that's three shots. Now Troy hasn't struck yet. That one had no. Uh, yeah, that didn't even no have a chance. sniff of the pocket. No. What kind of surface has he got on there, Tom? What, what? 240. 240. Wow. That's pretty low grip. <laughs> You scotch bright? He, he two, and I think Dan's got 240 on his. Okay. Knowlton, the number three seed in the mm -hmm. bracket. Troy Lent, the number five seed here in the final tonight. Troy, when he was practicing, and it looked like when he was throwing it, if he got it out like he did that one, for some reason, his ball's just not bouncing off of the outside, kind of like. Dan's is, but Dan's break point is way sooner than Troy's also. You were talking about those couple of purple hammers that Lint has. Do you know if he's using the earlier and rounder one or the longer and more one? Because if he's using the longer and more one, he might want to go to the earlier and rounder yeah. one. Uh, the one he, he was throwing is is the longer one. Okay, so maybe it's time to go yeah. to the one that's a little earlier and rounder. It's got to pick up a little bit sooner. We know Knowlton's going to be in the same ball all night, and it's this one right here. Yeah. That's a pretty that good pin right down there. purple hammer. So, Tom, you, we we got uh, two Brunswick guys out there. We got two ball reps here. Do you and Jeff kind of divvy them up and who, or for this final? No, I, we both talk about what is going we're going to do and what we think that they need to do as far as surface and shape and you know how to play them. Uh, but when there's a lot here, we ha obviously have to split up and go one direction because. You know, in a 60-lane bowling center when we had, what, 90, basically 100 guys a squad almost, it was tough to get to everybody. How about, how about for this championship match? You got Dan and, and Troy. Did you get to pick a guy? We like, did not. Like winner gets to – or loser has to unload the truck <laughs> or something? <laughs> no, we, did, we didn't do that. He didn't like that one. Asked for the help, and he got the help. Yeah, that's going to loosen up the arm swing quite a bit when you carry one like that one. Yeah, when you think you got it out too far, you're like, oh, please hook. Don't forget, everybody, this is the Dell Ballard oil pattern, 36 feet in length. It plays the extreme outside part of the lane. But in this bowling center, we have seen that if you get it going left to right, it will fall off into the gutter for a right-hander, and it would for a left-hander. But I haven't seen any lefties really swinging it to the spots. So the only gutter balls we've seen is from right-handers. But the way Knowlton's going to be attacking the lanes here tonight, he will not probably throw a gutter because he's playing kind of up and at him, not swinging it to it. Uh, Danley, he finally gets a little bit lined up. It just looks like he's a little bit farther inside than he normally plays him, but, you know, he's always had a lot of bounce off the outside and the ball just peels, and it doesn't seem to be peeling quite as much as normal. See that big high backswing, that's more of a, what, seven to four? He just, I'm surprised he isn't a little bit farther left. I mean, with his speed and his rotation, it, 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 I think it helped his angles going to the pocket. But, you know, he's out there, we're back here. What's going through his mind is totally different. It's kind of like watching Janowitz when he, he analyzes the shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't imagine what's going through his mind. I can't keep up with that. There is, same shot, back-to-back. Back. And I ask him when we were out there, I go, it looks like the left is tighter or it's got a hang spot. He didn't feel it did, but it's kind of showing up on the show. Yeah, and from a, a perspective of thinking about what does he need to do here, you know, he probably needs to slow up a little bit, you know, well, and that's difficult for him to do. That's not his strength. Not with that backswing. I mean, he'd have to. And his footwork is really short to begin with, you know, in his last couple steps. So... He would have, to, he has to actually pull that swing down to create timing anyway. So that would be tough. Slowing down would be the toughest thing for him to do, I believe. He did grab a different purple to shoot that spare. I'm not sure if that's the, the rounder one, earlier and rounder one that he might just go to after this, but it was a different one. Well, he needs, definitely needs to start striking because Dan doesn't look like he's going to lead, get his foot off the gas pedal. Again, if you're just joining us, it's the best two out of three. Two out of three must win two games against your opponent. That was early. And the, the shots that I've seen Dan kind of have a, 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 a problem with, his feet got quick. He fell to the right. You know, and when, and when he does that, th those are the shots that he left opens on or, 
you know, had a spare shot. It, it's like he gets going quick and he pulls through and everything falls to the right. It's really easy to get going quick when you're bowling for your first title ever. <laughs> You know, this is like the fastest game in bowling, they say, when you're on, you know, a TV mm -hmm. final like this, a webcast final as we have here tonight. And he's going to need to, you know, take a deep breath, keep the feet a little bit slower, and post the shot. I saw him pop out of that one mm -hmm. as well. I think you were spot on there, Tom. Because Dan's normally rock solid. He, he did it a couple times in the previous match, and one of the shots he got away with, but the others he didn't. And he just, you know, he's got to... I know it goes by fast, but he's got to breathe. He's got to slow time down. And it is best two out of three, so he knows he's at least got two games. But you can't be thinking that way. You know, like, I got another game. Yeah, I don't think that way just yet. Um, but there's going to be a point now where if Troy gets too far behind, he's going to have to try a different ball, a different release, a different shape. Because right now he doesn't have anything going on in the left lane. No, the left lane, and but he's not going to finish there. So he's got to figure it out. 32 pin lead right now through five frames for Dan Holton. And it's easy to see how Dan can fall off because he doesn't have a big knee bend, so he has a lot of spine tilt to the right. And if he gets going, then everything just goes. Oh, that was in a bunch. Well, he is throwing the pin down ball. He put a lot of surface on it, and they've all been practicing out there. He threw a lot of shots out there. He could be burning up a spot that's hooking a little early, and I'm sure he's got – I mean, Jeff will know better, but I think he's got uh, another purple pin up. The purple – the purple purple with a pink pin. So are they, are they drilling balls similar just to be able to have fresh surfaces in the match too? I mean, because you well, can't touch the surface once you start, so if right. you get two, they're the same. Well, yeah, if you got two that are the same, then you can just switch. But his are not the same, and none of Troy's are the same. And I know Parker, a lot of times, will drill two balls exactly the same. And if one gets used up, he goes right to the other one. Yeah, he's, yeah, got, he's got the fresh one ready, <laughs> ready to go, right? right? No, I think that's it's a it's, well, especially in this, it's, you know, it's not a one-game match where you get new rounds. You can resurface them. This is three-game or best of three. And once it starts, that's what you got. Let's got to go. Try to shape a little more. A little, he, little weak ten. He's got to figure something out. I, th I think his feet, just from what I see here, are just a little bit too far to the right. He needs to, like, square it up. <clears throat> he's got to create a different angle somehow. I don't know how we missed <clears throat> this, but uh, or haven't talked about it yet, but uh, Troy Lynn is a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And uh, do you know who number 43 is for the Steelers? Troy Palomalu. That is right. Troy Palomalu. Similar, similar hairstyles. Yeah, they do. Very similar. I'll tell you what, you don't want to mess with either one of them in their respected sports. <laughs> Are you saying Troy looks like him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Doesn't quite have the same hairdo. It's, uh, it's only about two foot shorter. <laughs> Guys, I will tell you what, next time we come to Jack 60, we love coming here. We can't sit up here anymore because this is day three. That Whatever's going on in the kitchen smells fantastic, and I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> well, the kitchen's right behind you. I'm not, not, not going to lie. That's, that smells really good. Boy, I don't know what he can left, is left to do to this place. He's done everything to remodel this place. It's beautiful. That is every Again. shot yeah. on the lane has not read. <clears throat> Guys, again, in this event, 237 average was Chris Barnes through qualifying, right? Tom Hess made it in, squeaked in at 215. All right, the scoring pace we've seen in opening matches so far in our bracket play, it's normally taken 240 or 250 to win. Troy Lynn has <clears throat> been a guy who's been able to do that over and over again. For him to only have one strike through seven frames is surprising to me right now at this moment. I thought we would see a lot more strikes out of Lent. This pair is a little baffling Troy Lent right now. He's going to have to make some adjustments here if he's going to be able to take down Dan Knowlton here tonight. I got to bowl on this pair, and and I thought, and I said it to Jeff, I said the left lane when I bowled was, and it might could be obviously for the left-handers, 
it seems to be, was way tighter than the right lane. And th this was a tough scoring pair, I thought. When a lane is tighter, that <laughs> means that the bowling ball doesn't hook as much, right? So Correct. it could it's, have some downhill topography. It, it could have some, some, some dents in the lanes raised in different ways. It, you, you almost got to think that it's topography on that left lane because when we say tighter, they're slicker. It seems to be more oil on them. And you know that the machine didn't put more oil in the other lane. So there's got to be a reason that, w that it seems like it's slicker on that lane and the ball just skids farther it doesn't pick up so that means either he has to throw two different balls he's got to totally change lines or like you said he's got to figure out how to slow it down I mean, he's got a couple options but he's got to figure out something because this match is pretty much in hand so he's if he doesn't figure it out the next one we're going to have a brand new titleist for the fourth time this year through four events Lent can bowl two, 222, and, and Dan, 168, 188, 208, that'd be 228 pace there. 20 pins of frame is how we That's do that. That's a better shot. Oh, a little, little lazy getting up the hill there. Now, he had the, the nines going on in game one against J.J. What do you have, like six consecutive nine counts? Just left the back row. Mm -hmm. So that was like five, six out to four. I mean, that was actually pretty tight. And Nolton bowled 204 against JJ and then came back with 257 the second game. Yeah, it was 204 clean with a whole lot of nine. We thought Dan was going to have a problem in the match against JJ because he said his wrist was starting to give out on him. And <laughs> that's not a good thing when you need your wrist to make the ball turn the corner. Three out of the last <clears throat> four frames here for Nolton going in the wrong direction. He's only struck once, 25% strike percentage here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that ball actually picked up a little <laughs> bit there going uh, I wasn't worried. Yeah. You wouldn't, not until well, he hit it. Well, yeah, no, not until I heard the noise, yeah. That ball almost changed direction at the wrong time. So I guess maybe it's a little good news, bad news for Troy. He's still in the match. I mean, the math is there, but he's not going to get a chance to try a different ball. Hmm. Well, he can. He's, he's just got to be gutsy and do it. <coughs> he coasted that one. That's a light, light mixer. Light mixer there. Carried well. That's the other thing in bowling center. Sometimes <coughs> it's when you're right in the strike pocket, you get tapped a lot. It means you leave one single pin on a good shot. Right. Sometimes you get the light mixers, and the light hits carry better. And sometimes those run over the rack higher shots you trip out. In Troy's case, it would be the 610. That shot what, <clears throat> excuse me, wasn't even half pocket. <laughs> it was more like third pocket. He just barely just tickled it. Yeah, this shot, shot, this seven to three, that last shot. Mm -hmm. The shot in the ninth here. What's you know what's he going to do? Is he moving a little left? What's he going to point a little more? I think he's got to move left. A little more direct. Still doesn't get there. I I would like to know what adjustment he made because it didn't look like he did anything different. Yeah, if I'm him on this shot here, I'm con I'm conceding the game. Okay, I might even grab a reactive ball, uh, and uh, and and, like and just see what it would do. He's got to get something you know, to make that He just turn. did grab a reactive ball. He grabbed a CUDA. Oh, Wait geez, a minute. He's not going to throw it. He went and got it. Well, maybe he looked at the scoreboard and thinks, you know, hey, Nolton's bowling for his first title ever. Let, let's not take the risk here. I can take it in the first frame of the next game. Right? Because... There's still 202 left out there, and you know Knowlton, the nerves could come into play here. Well, yeah, he'd have to go open, open. I mean, it's been done before, but that's well, he he will get a chance to throw on the right lane, but the left lane is where he's really having trouble getting the ball into the pocket. I mean, he's only struck twice this game. Neither lane is great for him. No, and he struck more than that in practice. Call, call, call the plumber guys. That one's high flush, I think we say. 
<laughs> that was a great shot by Dan. And he's not he, he's not flirting with the gutter either. No, he didn't he, he didn't even care about the gutter on that one. It just went straight to the pocket. Well, he's up 1-0. So now, now you're definitely bowling for your first title this next game. Yeah. Whole different ball game now. Because it's just like the step ladder finals. You know, you turn the leader, you got one shot. Ooh. That ball never read. Well, Mr. Carter, I believe you're spot on with uh, when you were telling me about how you hit this pair and it was tighter on the right. You know, I was scratching my head a little bit with that analysis, thinking, well, you know, Troy Lent's left-handed. But now that I've seen a couple of Dan's hits here on the left lane, it's, it's kind of starting to transition a little bit. I think you were spot on with your assessment of this left lane. It, it, it just it plays totally different. Is every one of our shows going to be on 53, 54? Yes. Yep. Interesting. Something to keep an eye on throughout the yep. I mean, different patterns, but again, something to keep an eye on throughout the week here. Um, this will also be our world championship pair on Sunday. There's a lot of history on this pair. This is always the championship pair here at Jack 60. PBA events, PBA 50 events over the years right here. Look at some of the scores from the earlier matches. If these lanes are an overlay, which they very well could be, eventually the synthetics take the appearance of what's underneath them. And maybe this lane has always been that way. Well, and didn't we hear that there's, what, lane 12, <coughs> is it? Is like the, like the original 12 lanes or something, so they're a little bit different down there. Did I, did I hear that this week? Like well, there was an addition, but, you know, years when, ago maybe. But When you made the transition, it played totally different down there than down here. Troy, Troy moved a little left on that one. His lay down, his lay down was much further left. And I don't understand why he didn't do that unless he's – unless well, he had to be gambling, thinking that the pattern was going to open up, and it never did. Did he try the Cuda? I, no, I no, no, no. He just he just uh, did a nice job laying it right into the lane, and it looked like his lay down was about three boards further to the left. See, that tells me there's some indecision, though. He grabbed it, and we talked about it, and he grabbed it, and then he changed his mind, and now he's not. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do here. No. It's irrelevant. Why not try it just to see? Now, that one there went light because and he gave it a little more loft. He didn't set it into the lane quite as much on that one. Yeah, a lot of times that you'll hear... Uh, his thumb pop. I believe it's his thumb. I mean, your fingers can pop too, but he's spanking on a little harder. Well, when I believe you hear that it, pop. it goes knee, shoulder, then thumb <laughs> from Troy when you hear the different noises and creaks and pops for what he's got going on out there. I am surprised that we're not seeing the reactive ball just on this fill here just to see what it does. I realize yeah. that if he's going to switch to that ball, it's going to be on the left lane because he needs more hook. But I, what? He, unfortunately, he, you know, for him, he'd already lost the match, and he had a chance to throw it on the left lane, and he didn't. I mean, it, who cares about the spare? 228, right. 201, game number one <coughs> in the books. Advantage right now, and the best of three goes to Dan Knowlton. 1-0 we have here. Well, that sounds like a nice thing that a ball rep can do, uh, talk to the player after the match is over, and he <laughs> kind of revisited it maybe. Uh, yeah. He's talking to Ryan Schaefer. They're, they're good buddies, room together, bowl a lot of stuff together. He's pointing to the left, so maybe he's going to make that move. Well, if Schaefer's going to be in his head at all, Schaefer is the guy that is known to always use two balls on different lanes through qualifying, on television. It doesn't matter. Ryan really is a big fan of that, so he may tell Troy to try something on the left lane. We'll see. That peeled. He got that way out. 
Now, the other thing you got to think about here is, is Knowlton actually got a win there and had to finish on the left lane, right? right? So uh, Lent's going to have to finish on the left lane this game. That was right over five, out to 2-3. And, and the ball finished nice and, and that, drove through the pocket. That's a great look if he can keep that up. Just don't get scared of the gutter. Troy Lent with his win this year is now eligible for the Tournament of Champions. Should Dan Knowlton win here tonight, he would be eligible for the Tournament of Champions. Dan has been going literally all over the country, bowling regionals and stuff, so he gets the opportunity. Oh, oh my Lord. Uh, that he just spanked the pocket there, and that ball just. <laughs> I got <laughs> nothing. Well, wow. first of all, congratulations to Troy Lent on making the right adjustment. And you see that one wasn't lofted as much. It's, and when he gets more it, direct. When he gets it down into the lane and he's further left, like his first shot he threw yep. in the 10th, he is right over uh, flush in the pocket. It's when he adds a little bit of loft and gets it going a little right to left is when you start to see the light hits creep in. And if he does it on the left lane, he's looking at a multiple pin conversion over on the right side of the lane, typically so, including the six pin or the three pin. He's looking at the approach. He's making and then he's pointing to the left. He's going left. <clears throat> so this can be the Brett Favre stick it in the face mask and uh, just, just jam it right in there. He's sticking he's, with the he's purple. He's sticking with the purple. Well, he's going to try to sack... Uh, Brett Favre here in this particular case <laughs> being Troy Palomalu. Ah, I just got it. They have the same first name. That's the connection. That's but a hell of a break. Yeah, he, he went though. further left, and it still wanted to skid. To me, it looked like he missed <laughs> it at the bottom on that one. It, it didn't look like he got through that one quite as well. It looked like at the bottom of the swing, watch this. It just doesn't look like he hit it as much. Can you see how it, he didn't like it? That, was, that wasn't full hand there, little end over end. Well, it, maybe he thought if he went farther left, it's going to be more friction, and it was going to overhook, and it about didn't in, hook in at theory, all. In theory, right? Yeah, in I mean, theory. I think that's exactly what he was thinking. We're that just, one, we're just seeing more of the same on the left lane. From, I mean, he has not made the adjustment to get flush in the strike pocket yet on the left lane. Dan's getting a little quick. I mean, he was backpedaling on that one before. It, yeah, it got he's starting to, to feel it a little bit. Yep. His shot on the left lane was 1601. That was 1674. Yeah, he's, he's getting named. A little, little pumped up there. Not yeah. necessarily a bad thing that he's starting to get comfortable in the championship pair, bowling for his first title and getting a little confident out there. But at the same time, you do got to watch the speed. The, the big thing for Dan, he, he, unfortunately he's had a little bit of an issue with the spares. He's got to make his spares. Like that. That was that was pure. That was you, good. You weren't nervous on that one like the last ten pin. <laughs> the last you you one didn't I jump out of your chair on that one. <laughs> thought you were gonna throw your hip out. Again. Again. <laughs> I'm so broken, I'm glad I just got through the tournament. Hey, I gotta check. I think your insurance company just got a new rewards credit card for as much as they're gonna have to pay, they're gonna get some money back on that deal. <laughs> All right. Dan's taking his time. He's, he's he trying is. to keep it slow. That's good. Slow that heart rate down a little bit. Very similar to what we saw in the 10th frame on that left lane out of Nolten. Two, he, two pin he, combination, multiple pin spare. Not a good thing. And then with so that one, his good shot, shot, that thing. was more like six, and it only went to maybe four. And there, that strip of oil that I, we talked about in the tournament stuff on this pattern, I think if he hit it, the ball just never reads. you got to get right of it. Too right with the feet? You gotta, well, he's either got to get his eyes farther right or move farther right. Yeah, when know? he's getting two, three, the ball comes back. When he hits four, it just sits there. 
Yeah, one way to get there faster is move your feet to the right. Yeah. Okay, so we have a door open here, and now if you're Troy Lent sitting here, you got spare strike. You can go up and throw a couple strikes here, take a pretty big lead here in the match early. So as we get into this match, the left lane obviously being a problem, do you, does he get more aggressive? Because do you think he's going to get scared of the gutter and, and not send it there where he needs to be? Or it, he's got to get farther to the right with his feet or something. Well, got, if, if, if there's no friction, there's no hook. Right now for Troy, this right lane, he just solid nine on this lane, made a great adjustment. Uh-oh. I said, uh-oh, after he let go. That was, again, too far. He's playing on top of that strip, which is scary. I just don't like as much right yeah. to left as that is. Because he's sliding on, like, 13. He just got nothing that, that, that's getting to the pocket, no matter what he tries. If he sets it into the lane, like, doesn't loft it as much, like, small the, loft the, for Troy. It, the ball reads better. It does. It reads. It picks up about a half a foot sooner mm -hmm. to a well, foot sooner. It, it, it's just kind of like, you know, in on, with your car, you, you take off slower when there's ice or snow. you, you got to get some traction going, right? And when he gets it in the lane, like you said, he, the ball picks up a little bit better. When he gets firm with it and gets it out there, he misses that front part of the lane, and it just overskids. He just never starts reading. I, I think that loft is more of his natural game. Getting it is. It, getting, it is. It, getting it down is kind of tough for him, I think. Well, and he doesn't have... Uh, Hardly any knee bend with the injuries he's got going on either, so it's even tougher to get the ball down in the lane. That's direct. Boom. Yeah. That's direct. Well, see, he didn't send it. He didn't send it left. No. That was that was a rope. That was a rope to the pocket. His swing is so steep. It's kind of like Jason Couch in the old days. His swing is so steep that if he hangs on to it a little bit at all, it's going out on the lane. I mean, that was six to five and a half. I mean, there yeah, was, right. There was, there was no right to left on that. And yeah, somebody back here watching off his hand said better shot. Everybody could see that, the move he made and what that did for his reaction. And I didn't look to see how he starts with his feet, but sometimes you can close your feet up, meaning that if he starts with his right foot in front of his left foot, it opens up the yeah. shoulders and the hips yeah. and everything. Yeah. If he can close that up and put them together yeah. or even move yeah. the left foot a little bit in front of the you, right foot. You change your hip direction. Exactly. You, you change your body direction. Oh, oh. no. Boy. Seven nine in the pocket. Game two not going so well here for Dan Knowlton. He had a, he had a mental error there by missing his spare on the left lane, the bucket. And now on this shot here, just a horrible break for Dan Knowlton, running over the rack. Look at this, seven nine. And that ball just drove through the pins, and that's just a bad break. Good news nope. for Dan here is Troy has not doubled. So far. So far, <laughs> yeah. Since Troy's going to have to make a move on the right lane because now he's having the same kind of problem he was having on the left lane. He's got to get more direct, I think. He's always been able, I think, in this year of seeing Troy, been able to kind of overpower the lane a little bit with his rev rate and his speed and having so much surface on a ball. Today, he's not overpowering anything because that strip of oil is kicking his butt if he hits it. And that's what's been interesting with his Ballard pattern. It is shorter, but you need to have a little touch. You can't just chuck it to the drives and watch it hook. That, that's not happening. Great shot in the fifth for Knowlton. So Troy's got a chance to take a pretty good sized lead here a little bit if he can double up, but the trick is the right lane. He might have the left lane figured out. Maybe. A spare here gives him a 26 pin lead. 
A strike gives them a 36 pin lead. Since it's the best two out of three, we don't have to worry about total pins. We just got to win a match. Yep. He didn't send that one as far. That was more up the lane. I wonder if he went to that other butt. That, that one shaped a lot more. I mean, it yeah. didn't look that different from last shot, but I wonder if he changed if he changed balls. It didn't have to cover as much real estate, you know. Makes the ball even appear to be stronger than it may be because it didn't have to cover so many boards. Well, those are the two best shots we've seen from Troy, and he got a maximum result on both, getting that first double. Up for grabs here is the first of three Legend Pattern Championships. This is the Ballard. Tomorrow is the Monticelli, and Friday is the Petraglia. Well, I think the Petraglia is going to be high scoring, but that Monticelli pattern, oh, my God, is that that's way tougher. Oh, what a break. Oh, that's, oh my that's, Lord. That's, I mean, the, the strike in the second was a good break as well. So Yeah, he's telling himself, slow down. He, he, adrenaline's going. I thought the targeting was good here. It was further left, but... It wasn't like he was so right to left. He was still pretty parallel. This is the thing that you you just said. It's about, I think you got to have a little more touch on that left lane. you, you, you got to get a little more touchy-feely with your bowling ball there. Be nice to it. Yes. Quit trying to spank it. <laughs> Much no better nine, shot. seven there. And also, up, you know, of course, first place check here, a trophy, but at all Dave Small Centers, you got bottle the of bottle wine. of wine in the trophy as well. 14, 14 hands. hands Cabernet. Yeah. So. And it, I don't know if either one of them drink wine, but if they don't, <laughs> I know you, somebody you does. Dibs. <laughs> you calling dibs, sorry. I'm, I'm calling dibs. <laughs> Big shot here for Dan. Don't hit the strip. Oh my! That was that was totally different. Where did that come from? I don't know. That ball went right immediately. Oh my God! He threw that. That went out. I thought yeah. in real time it looked like it got out farther, but yeah, that's yeah. still that that's yeah. still hooked more than anything we've seen out of him yet today. I mean, it looks like he moved his feet a little right and his eyes a little bit right. Yeah. He just threw it as good as oh. he's been throwing, and look what it did, it's shaped. He's got to be able to keep it out there, but without throwing in the gutter. Beautiful. That off his hand was money. Not as much loft. Got a full handful. You said beautiful as soon as the ball hit the lane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's all in the point of release and trajectory. He even went a little right to left on that one, but because he got full hand and gave the time yeah, that for ball the ball to read by setting it down a little bit earlier and not loft, uh, you know, he's always going to loft the ball. He's never going to set it down on a glass coffee table without making it shatter here, right. guys. <laughs> he, it's just his game, right? It's how he bowls. But sometimes he is able to reduce the loft a little bit, give it a little bit of extra room, and boom, there we go. I mean, with his steepness of swing, his loft almost becomes a hit up instead of a release into the lane. Uh-oh. That is not reading at all. Forward tumble roll there. That was not good. You know, we talk about the three things. you got to have the right speed, the right targeting, and a consistent release. And that one there just looked like that was a, you missed it a little if, bit. If we've seen that replay right there again... That ball came in the air up off his hand. That loft you're talking about, it wasn't into the lane. He can pick this up. Watch. He's got the speed. Slide it over, bounce it off the wall, and take the nine out, too. Ooh. All right, what's that doing to our score? 234, Dan Knowlton, max score. 235 for Troy Lynn, so... Getting two was big there. He's still he's still up by a pin if they both strike out. Yeah, and Troy's got to finish on the left lane. What's your odds? Uh, I, I, I don't like him. Yeah, okay. Not, not very good. I think I was in front of you yesterday. We were talking about sliding him over. Did you see the 4-7-9 I picked up? 
No. The way I picked it up, I've never seen it done either. <laughs> That's flush. That's right. flush. I don't want to be Captain Obvious here, but the shot in the ninth is the big one here for Dan because it is on this left lane where he has left a bucket and he has left almost a bucket also. It is the tighter of the two lanes we've been talking about. We've beaten a dead horse here. However, the last shot he made over there was flirting with the gutter. But it, it was shaped beautifully. beautifully. Perfect, yeah. So he needs to do that again. Right. I mean, he's got to visual, visualize the shot and just make the shot that he sees in his mind. I mean, he's seen it happen. He can do it again. And this might be the last time he bowls on this lane tonight. Yeah. Well, he sure hopes that's the truth. Oh. He didn't bowl this lane again. He's going to get Good five out late. All right. Well, five paralyzer there. Yeah, that was almost... In that puddle, five pin falling forward, the last pin to fall. I just got to say right now, what yeah, Dan he, Knowlton has done in the back half of this game proves that this guy can play. I oh. mean, this, that is impressive. He is literally three shots from winning his first title. And remember, if the 7-9 falls in the fourth, he's got to lead. If this doesn't strike... Troy shot says, of the match right yeah, there. We're just going to see about that, he says. Okay. Now he's got to finish on something that he hasn't struck on except for twice. 50-50, 60-40. Oh. Well, he's you know, only really thrown one good shot. Remember the two strikes, two of them were, were a little suspect. What are the odds of him doubling on that lane? That ball there only gets out to about six, and it holds. He's trying to make the same shape on this lane, but this lane won't allow him to do it. So again, Knowlton can get to 234. Troy Lint gets three and a tenth. It's 235. Yeah, well, Troy needs this one first. Uh oh. So, Tom, let me ask you, do you know what happens in the event of a tie? Is it a half and a half? or? That's a good question. I don't know. We, we there. may be fine. We, I mean, there's a chance we could find that out shortly. There, here. There's, there's Johnny Weaver right there. <laughs> that was farther left and more up and at him, it looked like. At least. I, I, I liked where it was in, in, in the mid lane. I liked where it was at the range finders. It was, it was far enough to the right that it had time to pick up and get to the strike pocket. Sure, it was a little right to left, but he is much more direct at the pocket. I did also take a look at his feet here. You, you do see that he does have the left foot. In, in back of the right one where his, his hips are open. His, everything is open, so it's very difficult to square up doing that. Oh, that's uh, left. Two twenty four. I've been very impressed with what he's done here on this right lane the last few or this left lane the last couple of shots because he is pointing it at it. He is doing a much better job of not throwing it towards the other and expecting it to come back. I'm quite sure he wishes he'd have done that earlier in the first game. So, game in hand for Dan Knowlton. All he has to do. Oh. The, all he has to do. He's the first one in the tenth. And one eighty-four, one fourteen. He's got two thirty-four left, right? Right. So he, if he he's got, if he throws the first one, he's got to have the second one to get to two thirty-four. Right, 234, right, yeah. If he gets nine spare, it's uh, 230 or two, 223. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good shot. That's, that's a great really shot. Good. And there's another good one. Yeah, gets there it we go. All right. All right, that puts him at 214 right now. He has 214. The next strike will put him at 224. He would need one pin to get to 225 and take home his first title and defeat Troy Lent two to nothing. Pose that one beautifully. That's one you might want to frame over the fireplace. 
and he's going to take his re-rack. Yep. Yeah, nine spare would be 223. He needs this next strike, and he's going to be our fourth new first-time champion here this year. It's the newbie year. See what happens when Parker takes some time off. Other guys get a chance to win. <laughs> Parker Bowen III, of course, our reigning PBA 50 Player of the Year, has elected not to bowl the inaugural PBA 50 World Series of Bowling due to junior gold going on right now. He is out spending time with his family and coaching the kids and giving back to the sport. So a shout-out to Parker Bowen III and all that he does for our sport. But right now, all eyes on Dan Knowlton here. This could be the winning shot. If not, we'll have to go to a game number three. It's there. It's it's flush. It's flush. Yeah. You think you, yeah. you think you want to have any Dan Nolan fans here? <laughs> Is there a couple of them? No, hang on. He's still still got to get that pin. Still got to get that pin. Stay behind the line, right? That's the most noise we've seen in the PBA 50 stop, I think, ever. <laughs> Absolutely ever. That was pretty cool. Just pick up a spare ball and throw it at the head. <laughs> hey, well, you just went down the middle. Dan, Dan Nolton. Nolten. Yeah, he is a PBA champion. Yeah. I'll say that one more time. Dan <laughs> Nolton is a PBA, PBA champion, champion out here on the National PBA 50 Tour. Congratulations to Dan yeah. Nolton. Danny did it. Yeah, it, his first title ever <laughs> is a national title. Yeah. He's going to have a tough time. Even getting the check, everybody wanted to congratulate him. <laughs> Look at the line. It's like we could sell tickets right now to, to shake Dan's hand. Quite a scene here in Jackson. Now eligible for the Tournament of Champions. Champions. What a sight here. Everybody just in line to get to see Dan. Congratulate him. Tom, we're just getting started here in Jackson. You see Dave Small down there. Josh Solomon, general manager as well. Again, we want to give a shout out to Dave Small and all that he has done for the PBA over the years. He's approaching 90 professional bowling tournaments hosted. I believe this week he will surpass that if you count each one of these events. Wow, that is, that's just unbelievable to host 90 PBA events. Huge fan of the PBA and also, of course, great proprietor here. Oh, Who gonna, needs to win a regional when you won a national championship? Dan Dalton, congratulations, Dan. Let's go without the mic. Grab the check and trophy first, and we'll talk. Oh. All right, I got one of the best jobs of bowling here. I get to talk to Dan Nolan. We've known each other for a couple of years, and to announce you as a champion is an absolute honor. Congratulations. I do have some bad news for you, though. 
You get the check, you get the trophy, but Tom Carter's called dibs on the wine. Oh, hey, you can have it. <laughs> you might have to share. Guy. Um, Dan, we know you've been working at this for a long time. This win gets you qualified for the TSC. That's a big deal. Um, congratulations. Great bowling today. I know you've got a lot of fans here. Um, go ahead and, uh, and give a shout out to everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th thank you to everybody coming out. My mom and dad are here. So that's uh, pretty special. Um, of course, uh, my wife's been here for the whole journey. Um, I know that my son got to be on FaceTime to, to watch that. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I kind of flew all over the place this summer trying to get a title because the Tournament of Champions is 30 minutes from my house. So I was doing everything I could do to to, to get there and, and uh, found me. Yes, this means it just means so much. Uh, thank you, Dave Small. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, every here at Jack Sixty. It's uh, my ball strikes in this building, so uh, I, I'm I'm really glad to be back here and and uh, finally get that title. Well, last week with Michael Haggett winning a Hammond, we added the first banner out in the trailer park. Now we're going to have two. <laughs> I, I, I I couldn't let him be alone out there. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it, you know all the encouragement from Michael and Jen. And uh, Tom Adcock is, is really uh, kind of been been behind me the whole day, and I really appreciate it. Well, you, you've had great fan support here. This place just erupted when you won that title finally, Tay. But let's bring out mom and dad. Come on out here. 